Well, what did you think of that intro? I know the music sounded, I don't know. The music was a little hard. It's really hard to find good music for an intro. So it's like the most difficult part of making YouTube videos, matching the music with the video. Anyway, so before we jump into it, I'm actually preparing the, the catch and cook right now. Uh, two things. First, the winner of the slime line right here, please email me because I'm going to give you one week to respond so I can actually send that slime line to you. Otherwise, I'm going to pick another winner in a week. Uh, so yeah, send me an email or just message me on Facebook, Instagram, something. The second thing is I actually got a lot of messages on Facebook and Instagram. And actually, this was suggested earlier this summer to do kind of a Q&A video. So here's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do like a series of them. I want you to ask questions in the comment section. Doesn't matter what it is, fishing related, YouTube related, just about me in general. I'm going to compile those and then make some videos out of them because a lot of you have requested that. So please go in the comment section, ask a question. I'm going to save it for later for a further video. So real quick, the last thing, there's parts in this video I don't sound very excited at all. Uh, it's because I filmed for about seven hours and the last hour is pretty much what you're going to see here. So it's it was tough filming for six hours without any actual content and then having to kind of scramble, create this pike fishing video with homemade leaders and all that stuff. So hope you enjoy it. Let's go back to the pike fishing. Well, welcome back everyone. It's been a few, uh, probably two weeks now since I posted something, or fishing video anyway. And the crappie I've been catching really haven't been that great as far as size goes. I don't really want to show them on camera. So I actually watched a video by Carl and Alex fishing. Uh, they're from Great Britain. They actually fish with Tobias Ekvalls, who is actually a Swedish fisherman. I'll link his uh, Instagram below. And the video I'm talking about, I'll link below as well, but they were actually fishing for pike with these bait caster setups. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Yep, it's running. Ooh, we got a fish on. In the middle of setting up that the uh, bait caster setup. Yep. Let's grab this guy. I had some flags out there. Just a little guy. I'm thinking. Yep. Just a snake. But it is a pike. Not something I'm gonna do the catch and cook for. Hopefully I can get a pike on actually one of those bait casting rods. Cause that's what I wanna get. He's gonna keep the minnow. See you buddy. So the rod is actually a uh, Mackinac. It's a Jason Mitchell 36 inch medium heavy Mackinac rod. I think they're like pike and trout is basically what these are for. I've never really used one, um, but I thought I'd try it out. Just threw a bass fishing bait caster on there. And then I had, I know I just did the slime line giveaway and I have a ton of it. So I used 10 pound mono for my main line. Um, I figured, well, it'd probably be a little bit more of a challenge to fight these fish with this lighter line. But I have a 60 pound fluorocarbon leader. And the lake I'm on right now, the pike aren't that big. So I'm not really worried. I saw a bunch of people actually use like 100 pound fluorocarbon for their leaders or 110 pound or something like that. I'm not really worried about that right now because the fish, if I catch one over 30, I'll be happy. Uh, but most of them are probably gonna be in the 20, 20 to 30 inch range. And also, since I'm actually out here and pike fishing, I figured I'd do a catch and cook. So today's mission, catch a pike on one of these bait casters and fry it up. I'm gonna walk through how I tied on my fluorocarbon leader here because this is one I did by hand. It's not something you buy in the store. Um, I figured if I'm going to do this, we might as well go all. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all out and tie everything on. I do recommend buying the right size. Oh, I got a fish. I already got one set up. I already have one of these set up on a cheaper rod. We're in frame. Oh, yeah, he's running. I have the bail open. Got these little little bells on there. Yep. 
Looks like it might be mission accomplished before I have that. I bought that $40 Mackinac rod and then I found these cheaper. This is like a $7 rod. I don't even think it's supposed to be a bait caster, but easy. Turn the drag up a little bit. Oh, this is so much more fun than hand lining these pike in. Oh, this is a good one too. For this lake, that's a good one. Come on, buddy. Oh, that's a good pike. That's probably gonna be 30 plus. For this lake, that's a good pike. Let's get that bobber out of there. I wanted to catch one on the, the other rod, but this one's not bad so far. Hopefully that line doesn't snap on the ice. Oh, his head's caught. Come on, gotta turn him. There we go. That's a decent one. For this lake, anyway. Oh, he's probably just shy of 30. But that is basically what I wanted to do right there. Let's see if I can catch another one. I'm actually going to keep this guy. There's no size limit on this lake for pike, anyway. So I'm going to keep this guy to cook it up. But I, I do want to see if I can catch one on the other rod, and I'm going to walk you through the entire setup for this leader that I got tied on here. All right, let's get this treble hook out and get that other rod set up. Okay, so now that we're finally kind of back set up here, I got uh, two of those rods set up, and I'm working on a third one here of the baitcaster style. But talk about the leader. This is a store-bought one. It's a just a one-aught treble hook here. There we go. Come on, focus. One knot treble hook. It's got a little red blade on it. And I can't remember. I think this is 65 pound steel leader. But the way I did it, I went out and got a 60 pound fluorocarbon. Come on. There we go. 60 pound fluorocarbon. And uh, basically, same setup, so 60 pound fluorocarbon. Next thing is a one knot. this is VMC one knot hooks, or size one hooks. Uh, just basic red beads, nothing too special. And then two different sets of Colorado blades here. Got the uh, gold and silver. So be sure if you're gonna, oops. Now normally you crimp this down where you actually loop this through some sort of crimps like these, preferably a double-sided crimp, not a single side, not a single uh, barrel like this. But make sure you get the size you need. I did not get the size I needed. That's my bad. So what I had to do is actually tie two loop knots, one at each end. I've actually done the uh, the double jig setup for crappie. Those loop knots that I use, it's pretty much it's exactly the same. So the two two loop knots that I use, or I use two loop knots, one at each end, one for the treble hook and one for the barrel swivel. Oh yeah, that's all. You'll need the barrel swivels as well. So the last thing you'll need are some barrel swivels for the ends. Ideally, this is not how you want to do it, but um, it's held up because I just caught that one pike on it. So I think I have a, I think I have a silver Colorado blade on that pike or the one that just caught the pike. I have a gold blade on the, the Mackinac rod that I just put down. And I have a gold blade on this rod here. Probably a mm, foot and a half maybe, foot and a half a liter, because you're, you're looping it back if you're, if you're tying it this way. If you're tying it with the double, double loop knot on one on each end, you definitely want to have a long enough liter to be able to actually tie the, the loop knots. So I'm going to start with the hook. I'm just going to feed it through the eyelet. And same thing if you've seen my uh, tie two jigs on one line, this is the same exact knot. It's a lot harder to tie because it's such a thick leader, but it's definitely doable. And put your finger through there. 
whoops, pinch the two ends together and start looping it around. And leave that loop with your middle finger right here. Ideally, this is not how you want to do it. You want to use crimps. I'm going to make that very clear. You want crimps because it's a lot easier and it probably holds a little bit better. So once I got my uh, loop formed right there, I'm just going to put that hook all the way through it. Same exact knot I use for those double jig setups. Put that hook all the way through and pull it. Pull it tight. So the next thing I do is I start with these beads. Uh, I put three of them on. I think, I think every single leader I tie it on, I put three. They're the same ones you can use to uh, tie walleye rigs for uh, trolling worms or something like that. And same thing with the blades. I got them in the walleye section. I'm gonna cut this tag end in a second here, but those are the three beads. I put three beads on, then I put the Colorado blade on. And you can put more beads on top. Actually, let's do it for this one. Let me put a couple more on top. Unfortunately, pike are daytime feeders and it's probably, I don't know, probably got about a half hour till sundown. So odds are not looking too good that I catch another pike. Got one, just not on the rod I wanted. So it's the same loop knot. And these, these leaders vary. I'm, this one's probably gonna be about six inches long. Maybe a little shorter. The one problem with these is you got to pull out enough line for that loop to form. It's a lot harder with the swivel end because there's not a whole lot of weight to flip that line over itself. Like I'm running into right now. I can't stress enough. Use crimps. Use a, use a double-sided crimp. A lot easier. Save you time but this will work in a pinch. And pull it tight just like that. Then I'm gonna cut my tag ends, clean that up a little bit. And there we go, hand tied fluorocarbon leader. Ready to catch some pike. All right, here we go, back in the kitchen. I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna walk you through what I did here. Very simple, very simple. Got one egg, one egg kind of scrambled up right here. Got my fillets, and then of course, I have my shore lunch, this is the original recipe. I'm going to do, this is gonna be a very light batter, very light batter. Shore lunch has a lot of sodium in it. It's really salty sometimes, so you don't need to do that thick, thick batter. Well, while I'm waiting for that fish to fry up, uh, I know I didn't have a measurement for the pike. It was probably just shy of 30 inches, like 28, 29, somewhere in there. The second thing, probably a lot of you are asking, how did you fillet the pike up? I actually had to look up a YouTube video. I will link the YouTube video that I used to figure out how to fillet this pike. It's been a long time since I filleted a pike, so I will link that one below. It's like a five minute video, real quick, shows you five different fillets, or shows you how to cut five different fillets out of a pike. Highly recommend it. I'm going to do this catch and cook again because obviously I only got two pike on the entire video and I probably caught about five or six pike total throughout the day. I just wasn't really thinking that I was gonna film a pike video that day. So once these are done frying up, I'm gonna eat them. I'm gonna sit down and actually edit a second video that's gonna come out Sunday or Monday. We'll see what time it actually comes out. Uh, but appreciate you watching as always. If you haven't subscribed, we just passed 10,000 subscribers on this channel. Thank you all so much for that. Please click that subscribe button if you're new to this channel. And uh, be sure to like and share the video as always. And comment below those questions so I can build up a list of questions to do a Q&A video. We'll see ya.